Hey people, welcome, welcome back to the YouTube channel, I hope you're very well. Um, I thought I would basically do a walkthrough video of my push session and also fill in some gaps because essentially, um, I feel like I say this all the time, I haven't picked up the camera in quite a while because essentially we filmed with Olav, um, that was kind of the three vlogs and then basically next week, which is last week for you guys, we have the YouTube Q&A, then I'm going to Venice, then this is coming out. So. It's probably a, a lot to fill you in on, um, but we're going to get straight into it. So um, one thing that I will quickly touch on, which I didn't really speak up on, on Instagram, um, but I will touch on here, is I actually had um, a little bit of a situation in terms of my pec uh, just the other day. Now, um, I was kind of going into the session a little bit like um, a little bit fatigued, um, and to be quite honest, I... In, on any given day, um, I would have probably have called the session. However, it was actually the last session of the mesocycle, and probably like most of you guys, you're like, right, okay, I'm just gonna finish this mesocycle. It wasn't actually this session. It was a, it was a session, basically this session a week later. Um, so I was basically on a flat press, and I basically felt my pec kind of ping. Um, so what basically happened is, um, well, I, I, I can theorize what happened, but basically, um, I, it pinged on um, the movement that's next. Um, it pinged on, on, on like a chest press. Um, and basically I couldn't move my arm. Um, so I had no mobility this way, this way, couldn't track. Um, and I was basically driving home with one with one hand, which wasn't that great. Um, fearing the worst in terms of like a major pec injury, major pec trauma. However, um, I got home, put some ice on it, all that good stuff. No blue, black mark anywhere, which is fucking good. Um, but yeah, it's kind of one of them things where, uh, I think the topic of this vlog is like what to do when training with a niggle, right? Um, and what am I going to do in terms of my kind of strain? Because I do actually, I know it's a strain. Um, nine times out of 10, a, a strain is going to occur under circumstances, which you know, you shouldn't have done something. Um, you just have to have that ability. And that kind of teaches you guys that even 12, like 12 years into my lifting career, shit happens like this. Um, and if you train very, very hard, there is going to be situations in, in which that this does happen. This is probably something that you cannot not avoid in your whole training career. It's just something could happen. You got to think with the, and this is my kind of message with like everyone's promoting high volume training and maximizing their MRV. It's like, you kind of don't want that because each increment of volume is going to be tapping into wear and tear. You want to kind of be on the lower end of the spectrum. I'd rather, I'd rather gain muscle on five sets per week than 25 because each of them 20, Five is is an increment of of injury risk, but um, yeah. So basically, it, it kind of pinged. I had mobility. Um, I theorised that it's basically tracked out of the of the kind of uh, like out here, and then it's basically popped back in, which is exactly what it felt like at the time. Um, I think in the, in the heat of the moment, you're like shit. That's a that's a pec tear, but um, it, luckily it was um, it just tracked in and out. Um, I've got mobility, which is great. Um, I actually just did a D volume or a D load uh, push session, and I've got. I compress basically. Um, it's just going to take a little while. So what what to do in basically uh, when when you're when you're injured or when you've got a niggle? Number one, first and foremost, anti-inflammatories. Um, so things like joint supports, things like icing, heat baths, all that good stuff. Things like tiger balm is going to be invaluable here. Now, obviously, it depends on the severity of the injury. Like you can't tiger balm an ACL injury, or you can't tiger balm like um, your leg breaking, obviously. Um, so yeah. And then in terms of like what I'm doing about calories, so obviously that situation, don't train like a dick, like all that good stuff. You're probably not going to be able to train 100% um, for a little while, especially while well, given context what your injury is, right? But I definitely can't necessarily do what I was doing at the end of the last semester cycle straight away. Definitely not. So basically in that situation, in that context, what I'm going to do is actually just rehabilitate it for kind of the next three weeks. I'm not going to be in a hypo or hyper, sorry. I'm not gonna be in a hypercaloric state. Does it make sense in this situation if I can't like train maximally to then push in a lot of food? So maybe consider maintenance. And um, what I'm actually doing in, in the next 30 days is I'm going to Miami in 30 days and I'll probably bring you guys along for the ride. Um, but I'm probably just gonna go into a little cut. Um, probably makes sense. I was gonna have a little cut in June anyway, um, like a mini cut. It probably makes sense just to do it here and then just clean up and then go from there after, after that um, event because essentially, 
um, yeah, it was, I was just going to go Miami. I'm actually going to Seville in, in June as well. Then after that, I was going to do the cut. It's kind of like, might as well call it here since this has happened. Um, and the amount of volume to maintain muscle in a short amount of time, like a mini cut, is you don't really need that much. So it makes sense. So yeah, consider the phase you're in. Probably not the smartest decision to go for kind of a calorie surplus, especially when you're injured. Make sure you're hydrated properly, and then obviously we've gone to the anti-inflammatory side of things. And then just take time. Don't train like a dick. Don't don't go straight into what you were doing previously. Like if you have a pec strain, a pec kind of tear, uh, like a shoulder injury, don't then kind of fast track the the injury. So like don't have your injury. You can't even get mobile. And then all of a sudden you're going back to what you're doing before. It's because you're just going to re-injure it very quickly. So just be very careful. Um, and kind of, uh, yeah, I think that a lot of people, especially like when we talk about like training when ill, a lot of people know if they're good to go in terms of training when ill. Um, injuries, we also know that. We just need to listen to ourselves in that situation. Um, and again, these injuries don't just like, it's not just peck tear. It's always like, hmm, it's accumulation of different things that, that happen all at once. Then it's that. Um, so yeah, here's a physique update. I'm basically just going to strip this back to, I'm around like 89 at the minute. I'm going to strip this back to around 80 and then go from there. I'm definitely not going to get shredded in the next 30 days. Um, but I'm probably just going to get a little bit like, you'll probably start to see some midsection uh, coming in a little bit. So it's going to be quite an aggressive cut. And uh, I, as always, I'll take you along for the ride. Anyway, hope you well and uh, I'll speak to you very soon.